discussion today will be focusing on the UBS scandal that saw the bank declare a loss of over $2 billion as a result of unauthorized trading performed by a member of the Global Synthetic Equities Trading Team in London. UBS is a Swiss global financial services company that originated as a bank in Switzerland. It was formerly an abbreviation for the Union Bank of Switzerland. However, after the bank mergers with Swiss Bank Corporation in 1998, the abbreviation ceased to exist. UBS has been formed from approximately 300 banks and, and the origin can be traced back to 1856, when the earliest of its predecessor banks was founded. The company headquarters are currently located in Basel and Zurich. According to their company profile, they currently maintain leading positions in all five of their business areas, making them the preeminent bank in Switzerland. They currently have a network of roughly 300 branches spread across over 50 countries and employ around 60,000 people all over the globe. What was the scandal? On September 15, 2011, UBS trader Kweku Adoboli was arrested and criminally charged with fraud and false accounting. His unauthorized trades had accumulated in $2.3 billion worth of losses. According to a statement released by UBS at the time, the losses resulted from unauthorized speculative trading in various S&P 500, DAX and Euro stocks index futures. The end result culminated in Mr. Adoboli being found guilty on two counts of fraud and sentenced to seven years in jail. UBS was fined £29.7 million by Britain's Financial Services Authority. The CEO at the time, Oswald Rubel, resigned to take responsibility for the incident and was replaced by Sergio Amati. In a statement issued by UBS, we can ascertain that the key accounting failures involved in the scandal centred on the company's controls. They have highlighted two control deficiencies. The control requiring confirmation with the counterparties of trades within the investment banking equities business, the controls for relationships between different trading desks uh, to ensure the, that internal controls are valid and accurately recorded in the UBS's books and records. Management at UBS has been harshly criticised for not detecting the errors as the scandal has reported to be ongoing from 2008 to 2011. The deficiency in the detection of the unauthorised transactions can be traced back to the culture within UBS. It can be deduced that the accounting policies were not strictly enforced and hence why the fraudulent trades were able to go concealed for as long as they did. The internal auditors of UBS failed to detect or prevent the weakness in their internal controls, which allowed Adam Foley at the time to utilise the ineffective controls to his own advantage, which involved numerous acts including his unauthorised trades. He was also able to devise a scheme in which he lodged profits into an unknown account, in which he selectively injected into the books. In UBS's annual report for 2011, the audit firm involved was Ernst & Young LTD at the time, which were hired to assess and review financial statements of UBS in cooperation with the internal audit team, which reduced the effectiveness of the audit. However, at the end of the financial year, 31st of December 2011, Ernst & Young LTD were brought back in to evaluate and assess internal controls, as well as to confirm the losses accumulated. They provided an adverse opinion, alerting stakeholders about the internal controls being ineffective. The consequence of the road trading controversy include fine $47.5 million for the road trading scandal by FSA uh, for the $2.3 billion uh, loss accumulated from Adobe over a few years. UBS decreased workforce, especially in their banking operations unit. They cut more than 10,000 jobs. Many would have become unemployed and would have to seek for alternative occupations. Existing staff would have to pay back some of their bonds they have received. So many employees would be receiving lower paychecks. The shares of UBS dropped 10% prior to the scandal being uncovered. The clientele base of UBS would have dropped due to the scandal and the auditor's opinion potential investors would be more cautious. John used the boss of the other body was banned by financial conduct auditory to work in the financial sector at Origin. The accounting and audit failure we have addressed earlier really reflect on the lack of governance in UBS. However, its issue with governance were already recent. Even before the 2011 road trading scandal, UBS has been involved in several controversies, such as their 2008 and 2012 US taxation cases. 
which rules their cultural, organizational, technical, and institutional inability to learn from these past disasters. This parallels the management poor error handling and oversight of the whole system. According to the findings of UBS crisis in historical perspective, the top management has been too complacent and wrongly believed that everything was under control. They did not further corroborate the results from the numerous risk reports, internal audits and external reviews that had mostly positive results. Thus, they lacked independent professional judgment, healthy mistrust, and the strength of leadership. After reviewing the UBS scandal, we have found that the internal controls within the company have been badly maintained, allowing the bully to continue in trading for so long. From an industry standpoint, one could argue that the culture had a negative effect on other bully, adding pressure on outperform other traders. The bully was given too much power in regards to his trades and was not properly monitored. Their manager failed to take initiative to understand understand and educate themselves in the trade of the he was making. We conclude that had the accounting policies been enforced and the internal controls properly maintained with the aid that senior management would have overseen the risky areas within the company, the rogue trading scandal may have been detected earlier or prevented.